actually. <laughs> you relate to that? I, I, I do. <laughs> Unexpected. Very good. Well, good evening, yeah. Dennis. You seem to still be alive. Yeah. What about that? We are. Here we are. Not worse for the wear. Hap, hap. Happy hour. Happy, happy, happy hour. My day. One of the highlights of my week for you and you know, for me and maybe for you and maybe nobody else. But we did. We had, apparently we had 47 people listen to us. So it's it's like I don't know who these fucking 47 people are, but they got they really don't have anything better. You know how many minutes are in an hour? No, 60, I guess. Yep. And you know what episode number this is? 60. Six zero, baby. Just a guess. Yep. Six zero. Oh. Wow. 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 Um, That's 10 hours of recording? No, 60 hours of recording. That's what I meant to say. Divided <laughs> by 6 is 10. This is, this is one of those math problems. Divided, divided, divided by 6 is 10. Oh, you know, I would, whenever there's a math, a little funny thing that happens, I think about that movie, What's His Ass, The Young Billionaire Created Nothing Other Than Facebook. Yeah, um, the social network is, is the movie. Zuckerberg is the... Zuckerberg, and he is at a meeting, a legal meeting, and the lawyer across the way says to him, so as far as we can tell, there was $10,000 worth of damages, and there is, uh, according to our estimates, there's $100,000 worth of other ancillary issues, and so all total, there's $110,000, and Zuckerberg looks up, has a pencil and a piece of paper to sand and says, well, let me see. He, he says 10000 and 100000 He looks up, he says, yeah, that's what I get, too. <laughs> Just to be a dick about it, I guess. Just to be a total right. dick. Like, what in the fuck? You, you slow talk and whatever. Well, anyway, this, it's a great movie. This, I, I enjoyed that movie, too. That, that's a Sorkin movie, I think, too, which we discussed What's recently. What's it there in Sorkin? That reminds me of that, of that blunder that, that Brian Williams had a couple of weeks ago that we talked about, where they said that... Oh, the uh, math issue. <laughs> yeah, where Bloomberg gave $100 million on his campaign, and they said, well, you know, that's like you, know, you could give every American a million dollars. That's right. And then they put a screen up, yeah. and then he repeated it. <laughs> you know, I look at him and I say, you crooked-faced motherfucker. First you're in a hel helicopter. No, no, you were being shot at. No, no, you were on the roof. Oh, no, wait, you were in your room. Oh, wait, no, you were locked in the fucking bathroom, in the fucking hot tub, in the fucking uh, bathtub with the curtains drawn. Mm -hmm. You weren't anywhere near, you bullshitter. Once somebody lies like that, I don't. I can't believe that they put him back on the air. I find the man an, 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 an extraordinary bore. And absolutely, I don't watch it if I can avoid it because I am, in fact, looking at a newscaster who's a fucking liar, a serial liar. He's he's had more lies. Was something on that one? Sure. Okay. He lied about it. He lied about it, it was a cover up. No, that no, no, that had to be coaxed into it. There was a that went on and on, lie after lie. Like like he would say, it isn't about the crime; it's about the cover up. And he's the one who coined the phrase during the electoral college thing that just drives me nuts. And he says, we're ready to make a characterization right. and to say whether race is won or lost or too close to call. And the way that they make it sound, it's like, you know, but there's only four choices. And often they do this dramatic, we're about to make. Right. Yeah. And then end up saying, and it's too close to call. And it's like, <laughs> what an amazing <laughs> characterization. Is that all caps? When you write it out, is it all caps? Mm -hmm. Brian, uh, is it really a word? My brother would say, that's not a word. <laughs> it well, a word. it's a good thing there's no lying elsewhere in politics. So He's not politics. He's supposed to be a newscaster. You mean there's no other lying in broadcasting? It's, he might as well be on Fox News as far as I'm concerned. Wow. And, 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 and you know, because he's, he's lied or not checked his facts. There's another broad on MSNBC who says this crazy shit. You know, and, and it's like it's you know says stuff that's just not true. Uh -huh. And and she ran. She was a Republican on a campaign. Kathy, what is it? Turek. There's two women. I hate to get them confused, but I think it's Katie Turk. I don't know, but it's the same thing where it's like time after time. So you're reading this inanity that comes out of fucking Trump's mouth. That is like when you read it, you say, "What? <laughs> oh no!" But then when you read what she says, yeah. you say, "What the fuck is she saying?" She's still better than him. You These false starts. And, uh. You'd think it would be like he would be such an easy foil to look good, you know, in comparison with. But, but 
Like well, that, that's, the, that's the problem with right. the with, with that whole with the whole news inter- as entertainment industry is yes. you you watch when people are doing outrageous things and yeah. saying Report. amazing things and especially being really confident about about something saying right. look I'm certain that that this virus is going to go away next week and we're all going to and everything's going to be happy again and <laughs> like, that's what no we want to hear <laughs> but well I don't know but that's what who wants to hear is that what you want to hear I mean, everyone would like that to be it's true. What, it's, it's what 30... Huh? But you, that's a different thing than saying that that's what you want to hear. Ah. I mean... That's it's what you want really, to believe. Of course. I mean, yeah, I don't know. But you, no, 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 no. You can't You can't use the word believe in any association with Trump. Not, not just in the same sentence, not in the same paragraph, not on the same page, not in the short paper, not in the manuscript, not in the book. You cannot put those things together. Okay. Not a lot. Bah! Did you see? I wish the, I had an electric buzzer to, to buzz you when you when you did something I didn't like. Can we, you fix that up? We could like hook it up to my chair to like zap me. Yeah. Just, right. Oh, oh, if I don't like. <laughs> only if it's mutual. And, only if I get one too. Okay. Okay. You agree to that? <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> And it's but, but, down to the buzzer with Dennis and Eric. But there's only there's, you're the only one who'll know whether mine is stronger than yours since you'll set it up. So we need an arbitrator. Right. Well. Yeah. We'll have to get a a measurement device, or we'll have a spider monkey or something sit in your chair, and then we'll zap it, and then we'll ship him over here. That's what I. That's how I became to be. There's a part of me that knows that's how I was born, and I never wanted to talk about it. Never wanted to admit it to you. But you seem to have struck on it. So by zapping a spider monkey, I may have been an experiment that came out of. It, it was in China. It was in China. It came out of CDC. Huh? They were trying to create a new test for COVID-19, and instead they created a thing that turns people into spider monkeys. It was bad, but in my case, it was. The, I mean, it was the reverse. Yeah. It was the reverse. You're, it you, was you, can, the reverse. you can still grab things with your feet and stuff, but the rest of you looks semi-human. Right. So. Right. So I love the pictures you sent me of uh, Trump as a half beast, half man, as a centaur. Is that the way you pronounce it? Centaur. A centaur. Yes. That, right? that somebody centaur where somebody half observed. Gold. Somebody observed that that it, he the way he stands looks like he is the front half of a centaur, and that there's some back half that you just can't see. And once you see that, like that's it's so true in all of his pictures. And some somebody did some some research and figured that it's probably because he wears these like. Elevators in his shoes, lifts, lifts to two be three inches, to be two taller. Three inches, right? Because and that's how insecure. He, that's his, how insecure. With his big belly and his little fucking hands, right? And he's leaning forward. And so these his pictures intimate or show him as, a, as a, a centaur with his tie dragging right down to the floor. Oh my God! Yep. yep. I thought you said goat. Oh, fighter! I just said goat. Oh God! What a monkey's ass that man is. So, so, yeah, yeah. How's your week been, Dennis? Had a birthday today, 90 years old. This goes out to Gramps, Great Pops. Happy 90 birthday. years old, locked down. Locked down, single room. It's like watching him and Grandma in a cage, one room cage. Yeah, when you described it before, when you described it before, it really it's sounded very, very zoo like. Like. Yes, but we're looking at a big window and saying, and one phone and. You know, he turned 90. My, we had a little party outside of the window and delivered unto him in real time his favorite corned beef, grilled uh, corned beef sandwich, nice. sauerkraut, and uh, blue strawberry shortcake. Nice. With real strawberries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was... That's a fine way well, to celebrate. You know, talk, you know, trying to talk on the phone. They don't have a speakerphone. It's a handheld. and mm-hmm. They, they got to move slow, and they don't have little tables to put their freaking food on. It's like, what the fuck? If I were in there, I'd organize a goddamn place. Yeah, you would. A couple of TV tables. Get the shit going in there. Make a table they can roll their wheelchair up to. Get so the party started. sitting at a table. Yeah. Huh? Ah, ah, right. How hard is this? I don't know. People like to, like to have to lean their elbows on a table. Right? Amen. That's, that's what elbows are for. My father has managed to get his mother, who is 94, maybe, in a... Yes, in a, I saw her last year. Oh. Yeah, and she, he managed to get installed in her apartment a little gadget that hooks up to the TV 
it's actually made by Facebook, strangely enough. You don't think of Facebook as making hardware, but it's this little gadget that hooks up to the TV, and as long as he can get her to switch over to HDMI 2, then they can have a video conference, you know, live, wow. seeing each other, uh, much, much like we are. And, uh, big screen. Yeah, and, but the cool thing that this particular product does is it, it it's a wide camera, but it detects where the face is in the room and just shows a tight shot of you. But then, like, if someone else walks up into the room, it senses that there's another zooms person and, and it zooms out. Or And if you pace back and forth, it'll, it'll follow you around. What? Isn't that wild? What? It's like technology, man. Facebook. Zuckerberg, huh? Yeah. Zucker. Zuckerfuck. Yep. I saw him down in New Orleans. Did you? Him and his wife, the baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or the they, were, they were just talking to a couple people and just absolutely unremarkable. Yeah. Just absolutely unremarkable. Just young couple. I gave them their, their space. I heard someone say it was him, and I looked at him, and I walked away. They were talking amongst a couple of people. Uh -huh. You know, pretty strange, you know, to end up in that position at that age. Yeah. You know, these people that have all the money, you know, that's the, the, the been talking recently about billions and doing some one or two episodes every couple of days. And by the way, I finished The Last Dance last night. Michael Jordan. I heard that finished. At least now a couple of people who he played with. One guy in particular, I, I'm sorry, forgive me for not knowing his name. It's not relatively unimportant. But what he said was, no thanks. I don't want to be part of a puff piece about Michael. Wow. And, of course, Michael produced it. It's his autobiography right. done through the eyes of biographers. And it's not unobjective, to say the least. But it also, you know, it takes six episodes for you to hear on camera. Six episodes out of ten. That he's married. <laughs> you don't ever hear him, maybe one time in 10 episodes, talk about his kids. So it's this view of him, which is all about the sport, without a doubt. It's professional life. But also, well, yes, which includes a great deal of emotion, but all emotion about the, about the sport rather than right. the contact. So in that regard, it's not a, a particular particularly, you know, real biopic into more of what yeah. you just you don't know is. what makes him tick. Right. You, what you know is him on the court. What you don't know is him off the court at all. Hmm. At court or on the way to the court or he showed in the spread or until he's now in his current age in his mansion by the ocean, sitting in a comfortable chair with a glass of great scotch and a big ass cigar sitting in a in, in, in no matter what he's wearing, interview after interview, he's got the same glass of scotch, he's got the same big cigar, all stuff, and he's just talking. Mm -hmm. And people are handing him an iPad and saying, this is what, you know, somebody, somebody said about this particular game. And he looks at it, and he just laughs out loud. Huh. And he just, he says, nah, 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 that ain't true. You know, I mean, the, the defender bragging, right, and, and, the, and bragging, and they called the defender the glove. But in the in the pre in the pre, pre up to this comment by him, they hand him the iPad, and it's this guy. You have to find his name, but he's saying, you know, I can defend him and this and that and the other. And Jordan's looking at it, laughing out loud. And then you hear what they called him, and Jordan looks at the camera and he says, "No, the glove wasn't any problem for me." And then they show the game where he just made this guy fucking skid on his ass, point after point after point after point, and he would make shit up to make him mad at somebody so he would want to crush them. He was a mystic, is a mystic. More than anything else is one of the conclusions. His great skill is his concentration and his will. It's not the other stuff. It's that stuff, not, not, to, not to minimize it in any mm -hmm. stretch, but this is the conclusion, made this a bit of a spoiler, but what the fuck is that? No surprise is yeah. that he never lost the viewpoint of what was important every bit along the way. It's astounding. Yeah. Astounding. Okay. So you're a millionaire that had a great career, and you pay someone to make a huge ego trip for you in several episodes. Uh, I mean, I, I, is there anything negative said about him? And, oh, God, yes. Okay. Oh, that's why I said it's not. I said it's not unobjective. Right. But what it shows is his... Is, is so, uh, argue, you know, it's Wait. a matter of debate whether it's his bad you, side, but this is what he would do. He would ridicule other people, and he would he would ridicule them and force them to up their game. If for no other reason 
to keep him out of their ass because the only thing he cared about, anything, was making certain that that other player played better than he ever possibly could and that Michael Jordan could count on him. Nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered. And you see, again after again, him ridiculing people, just saying shit to them again and trash-talking and never stopping of his teammates. Again, though, it's presented... You're presenting it in the light of, he, yeah, he was a hard ass, but it was in, but in service of playing better as a team, which. But this that, here's the here's it, yes, in, in fact here's the here's the quintessential a quote uh, from one of his co-players was this was, yeah, let's get this. He was an asshole. He could he was a jerk off. He often went over the bounds, but he was the best teammate I ever had. Right. And except for a few, like he got into a fight with Steve Kerr. In fact, I might have sent you this. Maybe I didn't, but and I'm not sure with all copyright shit that you can latch into anything about this. But you know, Jordan's dad was murdered in North Carolina, as I'm sure you're aware of. And un- unknown to me, Steve Kerr, his dad was murdered too. He was the president of University of Beirut, and he was murdered when he stepped out of an elevator. And that was part of what propelled Steve Kerr to the NBA and nothing but basketball and this story about him and Jordan. And they never spoke to each other about each other's fathers. And one of the things that people said about Jordan was, Jordan was different than the other players. He was in his own sphere. It was hard to get close to him. He had three bodyguards that weren't just bodyguards and assistants. They were his best friends. They were his defenders. Mm -hmm. And one man he cherished as his father, in a father figure once his dad had had passed. Mm -hmm. But this is interesting is that as teammates, Stephen Kerr and Michael Jordan never would have that conversation. They never had it. And all the years they played together, which shows this distance between this professional, grueling basketball life and that little bit of other time right. that you have. And so the viewpoint of Jordan is the, my takeaway. He was a total fucking committed asshole half the time, and I don't care. I love him. <laughs> I love how he did it. I wouldn't change a thing. And as far as the other stuff goes, that's just a shit. He fucking won two, three feet on his fucking back. Yep. It doesn't matter what you think, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, anybody who's going to, you know, say shit. He's the fucking goat, man. The fucking goat. So I find it really interesting that ESPN was going to air this later, but then they, like, got a drought of sports and they have nothing to show. And so they, they aired this, and it's been really popular. I've heard lots of chatter about it. Oh, show. my God. Oh, oh, it's, it's, All over. it's a big hit. And It's a big hit. But I wonder if ESPN, like, you know how MTV stopped showing music videos and started showing, like, reality TV and other bullshit? I wonder if ESPN, you would think there's always going to be an appetite for sports, but at least during this time where there is no sports, I wonder if they, like, are struggling to come up with some sort of documentary uh, content that they can that they can play. Well, here's an interesting point, and I, and I and I'm I'm with you on this. What are they thinking, kind of thing? Because one thing I know is that what's going to happen Sunday, 3 p.m. U.S. time, Eastern time in the U.S., is that Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, and Tom Brady, and none other than Denver quarterback Peyton Manning, are playing a foursome for charity for COVID-19. And the viewership is going to be like nothing we have ever seen. And what they have to do is they have to create the new situation of intensity and drama without the crowds. And it becomes more like right. a documentary in real time and bringing shit into it. And you can imagine a screen of when, if they could do this technology is there, is that when one of these guys makes a shot, is that you do a zoom with a hundred small pictures on the fucking camera of everybody fucking sharing. Yeah. I don't know about that, that? But, but they, it's, it. Thought I would spark. A hundred, a hundred people. It's disappointing. Thought I would spark. <laughs> spark. No, but it's, it is interesting. Like the latest John Oliver bit was all about sports and if they're going to make a comeback and whatnot and how they've been trying to get professional wrestling to be shot in in Florida because in Florida they were dumb enough to s- suggest that yes entertainment sports is an important thing that we need to preserve but it's interesting to consider like just that golf thing where you've got the four the four golfers either they have caddies or they don't fine but you still need 
They don't. They're carrying their own bag. Okay. But you still need at least 100 people to be manning the cameras and the sound and the editing and stuff. And they all have to be in, in a studio in tight quarters. Like, you can't, pr- you can't produce uh, an event like that without breaking social distancing rules. Like, you have to get people close together, which... It, You're convinced of that. I'm convinced of what, what I just said. Do you have evidence of it, or you just know? I mean, the way... You know enough about the technology to know, and, and it would not it would shock you, and you wouldn't believe it if they said, oh, no, you're wrong. I, I just I, want to know your... By level of... How certain, certain are you? Right. Well, obviously, the cameramen are, you know, out on different holes of the course, and they don't necessarily need to be interacting with people. But it's my assumption that all of that video comes into a central place where yeah. there's a team of, of editors that are like choosing to go to camera two or to camera three or whatever. Maybe those could be separated into different like trailers or something and they could be talking about So let me tell content. you what I what I what I what sparks an image in my brain is uh, network network news, the the news hour with uh, newsroom. Um, is the newsroom. Room. Yeah. Where where yes, where the control room right 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 is Interestingly enough, I can see it, it without and a stretch at all. I remember scenes where three people in that large room were nearly socially distanced. Okay. The boards they were working on were so big, right? Yes, that but they for, were, for sporting events like this, I think it's all done out of trailers. I think they have trailers that they drive up, and everyone is editing video in or just a van. Like whenever you see those news vans that have the satellites on top, that those are those are getting the the feed from the cameras. Feed and then pushing the feed. And, and they've got to have huge jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you gotta, that's a good point. That that's my that's my unprofessional, not really uh, informed opinion. But well, I think you would be surprised, but not shocked, if you were wrong. But I can understand your point. But I wonder. And that's true if, about most things. What's that? I'd, oh yeah, is it? I'd be I'd be surprised, but not shocked if I was wrong. Uh, is you wrong so frequently? Are I mean, you pleased sometimes when uh, you were wrong? Sometimes like I'm self-flagellation. Sometimes self-flagellation. I'm, I'm, I'm pessimistic about something. It. Like uh, when I think this call today is going to be shit with Dennis, and then it turns out okay. Then you know I was wrong, <laughs> and it's <laughs> and <laughs> pleasantly surprised. Well, you know, low well, standards is well, the key to happiness. That's what well. I would say. I found another religious picture to put up on my wall here. I wish we were video. This is an amazing thing. I'll show it to you sometime. I'll take a picture of it, and you can post it. Um, a religious fact, picture? I'll send a few of my images. Yes, religious images. So what back religion? to our original, our original episode and the image of Christ that, of course, we just love so much that someone cleaned <laughs> and really... You'll edit that out. Yeah, excuse Woo! me. 30-foot <laughs> one. Whoa, COVID-19. 30 yeah. feet. That'll live in the air for 14 minutes. You're off. Oh, my God. Oh, here we go again. Do not edit this out. Five. Oh. Edit room floor, baby. Oh, he's doing the elephant sneeze. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the talented Eric. Happy hour number 60. Doing the trumpet dance. We got to oh. talk about the sneeze in the room, right? Woo. Oh, baby. Yeah. Wow. Don't let anybody. You need to quarantine, man. 14 days, all that shit. No. It's like a fucking shower in there. Because... Hey, did you see the did you see the video where these six people go in a restaurant, you know, and a guy puts a little, like, lotion-sized dab of glow-in-the-blue-light glow shit on his hand? I saw that, yep. And what it looks like an hour later... Some of these people look like the guy rubbed his hands all over their face. Right. It's everywhere. It's unfucking believable. It just puts the fear in me. So I'm in a, I go to a hardware store today, and it says right on the door, mask, blah, blah, blah. Please, you know, customers are asked to wear a mask. Everybody here is wearing a mask. And I walk in the store, and lo and behold, everybody's social distancing. Everybody has a mask. And then one guy comes, and he comes in my row, no mask. And when I back away and I look at him... It's my row, bro. uh, You know, and he doesn't notice me. 
Is it best one in your head? And then the thing, the, the thing that I was looking at, and I carried in a thing, and I had a, a package. I set it down. It was in his waist, so he picked it up and he put it on the shelf. No gloves, no mask, just shopping. And he was kind of a rougher looking character, so I didn't say anything to him. And it was like, whatever, you know, it was my first guy. Touch Everybody him. else had masks on, so I let it go. I let it go. But then I get the shit I need, and I start to go forward. A guy comes out of the next row over, walks right toward me, gets within two feet of me, no mask, no, no gloves, and I back up and I put my hands up and I say, Whoa, what's your mask, bro? Cover and that snus, man. A, Jody fucking goes about his, his business. And there's all this thing, I think we talked about this before, that, you know, what's shaming, and you read the article about you gotta have love in your heart and know all this. Fuck that! Put a fucking mask on! Isn't that fucking love in your heart? Put a fucking scarf. Tie your fucking jacket around your fucking face, you fucking jackass. Are you fucking kidding me? I know, right? This is our fucking fuck we're dealing with. No! I'm pissed. These motherfuckers and the people were like, oh, you know, the different circumstances and different people believe different. Oh, bullshit. Make it mandatory. People in Spain get away without wearing a mask? If you're out, like, exercising, that's one thing. But if you're going to a shop or something, then most people do wear masks. I haven't seen a lot of, like, shaming. I haven't seen people being told, hey, you know, what the hell? Put a mask on. You know. Even when they don't have a mask? Yeah. So. Really? I shame all the time. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I just can't. I'm sorry. I'm like, where's your fucking mask? Guy huffing up behind me in a fucking bicycle. Comes up so fast, kind of frightens me on the path on the way to the lake. Huffing. No mask, nothing. Just huffing right by. Mm-hmm. And it's like, whoa, put the mask on. So the chicken linger in the air, right? Depending on its minutes. It's like a shower of huffing. A shower like, of huffing. Know, There's an episode title. Chernobyl. It's fucking Chernobyl in the fucking mouth. You know. Get your mouth get your mouth Chernobyl off of me, man. It's like yeah. Yo, bro! Just this is a new thing is what you say to these people. Yo, bro! Chernobyl! I can catch on. Yeah. How about two? How about two that we each... Now, this, I don't want to be violent. You'll love this. But I'm pretty so I'm pretty noble, but Chernobyl, too. What if you... What's that? I'm pretty noble, but Chernobyl, too. Chernobyl? Noble? I'm noble. And, and, and you're noble. So, I'm noble... In Chernobyl. <laughs> That's where I was going. So, so I would say, I'm, I'm noble. You're noble. Sonny's noble. And Cher's noble. And Cher's noble. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. You're noble. Yes. Now I've lost my train of thought. Not hard to do. Is it? You know, is that a necklace you're wearing, or is oh. that is that Chernobyl press? That'll catch. Sorry. That'll catch on. What a catch on. Yo, Chernobyl! Hey! That's what, and actually... The fallout over here. What this is, is you're calling the person Chernobyl. Ah, you're it's such like a disaster. After, right. Right. Hey, Chernobyl! Oh, what? Oh, no, no, my name's not Chernobyl. My name is Paul, or John, or Pete, or fucking Dick. Uh-huh. Oh, no, no, man. And then you use what their first name is, and Chernobyl's their last name. Oh, what is your name? Pete. Oh, Pete Chernobyl? As you're driving away. Hey, Pete, Pete Chernobyl. Okay. I can, we can... That's what the fucking, the fucking ashes. Fallout. Falling down and, and the, the stunning Viral fallout. images of children playing in, in the dust. And parents holding up babies. and Oh, look at this. Like snow. Oh, my God. That's Jeez. what this fucking shit is. Do you see there was a there was a photo that went viral recently in France where they had some toddlers in some daycare somewhere, and the daycare providers had drawn little squares out on the out on the on the asphalt where the toddlers were supposed to be stay in their square, sort of like the equivalent of you know how America puts children in cages, but here they just draw the little squares on the on the outline and the kids are supposed to stay in there, and. Anyone that's ever been around a toddler knows that if you draw a line and tell the toddler not to not to cross it, yeah. they're gonna they're, they're gonna get right up on that line and just test as as far as as far as they uh-huh. can go. But uh, but apparently the in defense of that was that this was a game that they'd come up with that also achieved social distancing. It wasn't like they were you know right. just keeping right. the children, but still scary times.
Well, I'll tell you, man, we've had a couple of days of rain here, and the forests have fucking just erupted with the buds turning into leaves and the foliage is as green as anything I've, I've, I've ever seen. Like Oregon and Washington after the rain, after the rainy season. It's, it's, it is just so wonderful after you know, a winter, another winter. This winter we couldn't travel. This yep. winter we had to stay here. And so now it's like this, this appreciation of the fleeting nature of this weather. And uh, so I'm out in it every day that I can be doing what we can. We're still continuing to do our walks. I've sent you some images. Did you see the curly key vine yes. wrapped around the tree? Yeah. Is that point. like, what is that? Nature, man. Huh? Nature's... That's the kind of thing where you had said earlier, there's these things that transgress and, and go over time. Everyone always marveled at the sound of a stream or yes. the ocean waves yes. or the or the view of That's the stars. That stuck with you. I like it. And the, and the other thing is this is what I get from this forest, this growth that there's never been a time when somebody who saw this thing that I sent you the picture of didn't yep. look at it and didn't marvel, didn't just marvel at the symmetry. Hold on, let me let me look up something. Let's see if I can find, yeah. Look at this picture. This is a forest in Germany or Poland or something? Right. Have you, have you, have you seen right. this? Right. No, I haven't, but I sent you an image. Of silly thing. Of a, of a set of trees that aren't just angled that way, but in fact are twisty. Right. And another image of trees that aren't particularly twisty, they're straight, but the branches fall off and leave these holes in them. And they're, each of the trees are visually remarkable, like this image. Right. Okay. And, and in fact, I might say even more so. Apparently, the, the favorite explanation for this phenomenon is that these trees were, when they were just little saplings, were rolled over by World War II tanks and flattened, you know, in just a bad way. So and they then, came up side. And then they grew up like this. So anyway, a link will be in the show uh, notes uh, at happyhour.fm slash 060. Well, I, I, I wish there was an app that could, take, that could take the image of each of the two trees. I sent you that you can post as well and know what kind of tree they were. It would take quite a bit of research, I think, but... Anyway, it's all quite, quite remarkable. Yeah, I love walking through the forest and discovering those things and just wondering, because you can't know what happened there or how it happened. I mean, I guess forest experts can deduce what generally causes certain phenomena to happen, but it's just nature, man. It's like... Well, the, and the, the, the thing about the vines is that I sent you with the twisty is that the, one of the questions I have is whether or not the vine, which needs a host, to be able to climb toward the sun and surrounds the tree and climbs and then is supported by its own young shoots of additional vines that go up the same host and grow faster than the big vine, therefore wrap the bigger vine as almost a twine to the host and then climb to the top in an ever escalating uh, regeneration of the main vine, shoot after shoot, whether in fact they kill the host through some type of strangulation, which I kind of doubt, or whether the high number of dead trees I see that are wrapped with the vines may have actually died a normal death because their life uh, was expected to be 20, 25 years, like a white pine only lasts 25 years before it dies. It just edges out. Or whether or not the vines kill the host, which wouldn't make sense to me because the vines don't do much to get in the way of the leaves at the tallest part of their host. So it's, I, I'm sorry I'm rambling. No, 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 just... no, that's, that's interesting. I, they would have to be like digging in and stealing nutrients from, from the tree it's in their, some way. Uh, but if, if they're that's just, an interesting if they're thing. just growing, if they're just using it as a support to grow closer to the light, then it wouldn't make sense that they would kill the host, but. I wonder if beneath the ground, the rappy, windy, root underground wraps the roots of the host tree in such a way that strangles the roots, which right, like the, 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 that's what that's what determines growth, right? And life and death and stuff. Interesting. Well, <clears throat> we'll the, look um, at that. Look at that. Where is this again? Poland, I think. Poland. Did you ever? Well, I don't know. I'm half Polish, so I, so I West, really West recommend reading West Pomerania. Yeah, I recommend reading Poland. 
I, I read a I read a book about how how trees communicate with each other and how just crazy that world is that is like we walk through a forest and we see individuals right es- especially as Western Americans for sure a Japanese person walks through and sees more of a collective but we we're we're much more about individuals so we like see oh there's a tree and there's a tree and there's a tree but underground they're doing so much work both just together with each other and sharing nutrients and stuff in in just this ecosystem that we are if you're just walking through the forest you're really blind to uh plus it all goes on such a blind slower to it, but blind to it but not immune to it not it's not unknown to you yes you but, can't see it but you feel it right okay sure but you feel the vibration you feel the sense your sense of calm in fact is driven by the ethereal static and voices of those interactions that connection to that level of awareness similar to waves breaking an ocean and releasing ions and the wind in the high trees releasing ions and creating oxygen in a stream bubbling such as the language of the trees emanating from the ground and the rubbing and the the, oh oh, the rubbing (laughs) the oozing the oozing of the roots and ah no oh, what a tree sounds like but like they they live on such a different time scale than we do like when we walk through the forest just at, at the most leisurely pace it's like a formula one car driving through in to their you know yeah, sense right. of, of time right like it's just like boom, we're gone and they they're there season after season bending with the wind and and the rains and the and the whatnot so it's a totally different so I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you a series, a, a series of uh, pictures that you can post to this episode. Shouldn't be too hard. Which which shows you some flora and fauna, in what is a old railroad track turned into a walking path that I mentioned, 38 mile trip to to Lake Michigan, and the flora and the fauna, and then ending with a swampland at the end of the day, as it got to be seven o'clock in the evening, as kind of a a, a tribute to this idea of oh my God, how long has this stuff been happening the the picture of the swampland at dusk mm-hmm. is 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 it, it, it's just it's like something of a view of a century it's a picture of a century nice um yeah yeah well if it's, if dennis uh, remembers to send those to me and i am willing to do the work to put them up on the website they will be at happyhour.fm slash zero six zero so i'll also give the gps coordinates of the of the of the two the five mile stretch should i do that if you'd like we can we can post a we can we can embed a Google Maps link or something. I don't know. So what sort of what sort of fauna did you see? Um, well, a fern called a fiddle fern. No, that's flora. That fauna. Oh, what what? Oh, fauna. Aminals. Fauna. What? Ant. Well, well, um, the fauna uh, are prolific. Near my house, I see deer every evening. And in the oh dear. forest near my house, the climb stuck wilderness area here in Kalamazoo is got probably 40 or 50 deer in 50 acres. Mm-hmm. But on this particular walk, I've seen black squirrel. I've seen red squirrel. I've seen birds of all types. A lot of woodpeckers, red, red pileated woodpeckers, in fact. Mm-hmm. Now there's pileated. Now you're your chest is pileated so you can show an image of that so everyone can see what you actually look like i wish we were video because you're the whole image here is just unbelievable when you are as you are now pileated. I don't know that word. and still wearing your you did you did cut the top of your hair off though i see yes you got rid of your mohawk i did it was getting it, it would fall down to such like i already have a pretty pronounced widow's peak and it was just like coming down to my nose in an awkward way right. it was Having uh, the crest see, trim, covering up the pillion. Beard down. Yes, you're looking the top of the head yeah. of a bird from the bill to the nape. <laughs> pillion. From the bill to the nape. So, like my mohawk was from my bill to my exactly. nape. Exactly. Exactly. So, with the with with your particular look, I think you should put on a a bird beak mask. That stretches from your face two feet. 
24 to 30 inches long, that should be your N95 public mask. The COVID mask, yep. Because your widow's peak, your widow's peak. Yeah. And if you grow your mohawk back and fucking dye it, yeah. I don't know why you wouldn't. Nobody sees you in your job. You can look any way you want. It's true. So why not do the beat thing? And well, I think it, that would be true. Your mohawk. That would be true, except now that we have now we have uh, video conferences all the damn time. But yeah. But just show a close up of your face, eyes, nose, mouth, chin. I'll just get right up on the camera. This. That would be the most awkward Zoom call ever. What's this? <laughs> Hello, Eric. If, Eric, can you, can you hear me? If, <sighs> that'd be really good. Eric, I'm fading. Okay, <gasps> back away. Back, back away. <laughs> back away. Hi. Back away. So, oh, Chernobyl. Chernobyl, won't you back away? You're much too close, I must say. If you don't back away, I'll hit you in your solar plexus. That's a word you don't hear in, in very many songs. I must Only because I care, bro. Only because I care, bro. bro. I'm just going to punch you because I care. Plexus and knock in your fucking ass. We're here, mask. I care about me. <laughs> That's why I'm going to fucking. Boom! See the news today that our dear leader claims he's been taking uh, hydroxychloroquine. Yeah. Yes, yes, that explains it. He's reduced the amount of oxygen that's getting to his brain. But his little tiny heart, which his size is only diminished by the size of his own hands, and I would imagine the size of his own feet, which he's decided to prop up with two inch lifts, and a dick that's probably strung up with a fucking string attached to it that is tied to a fucking ring in his fucking belly button so that when he wants to find his dick, he pulls a string that's attached to the ring in his belly button and he pulls his little mushroom cap dick out of the fucking red fuzzy hair of his fucking pubis and with his small hands and his small dick and his small fucking heart, we have the essential Donald fucking Trump. Next week... I got a request for you. I need a blues tune access with no words to it so that I can sing what we wrote about Trump. I found it in my shit. I'm ready to go. I just need the tune. We'll talk offline about what I'm looking for. You can help me out. Huh. Okay. Huh. Well, it seems like you know where you stand on the next election. Well, I woke up this morning and I turned down the news. When I woke up this morning, and I turned on Ah, that was it. And ever since that day, I got the Donald Trump champion blues. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That's what I'm looking for in terms of a pace. But I'm liking the the chorus that we crafted. And this was you and I yeah. crafting this tune. As everyone else, you know, sang as if they were in a funeral dirge. And we decided to jazz it up. I don't know if we can iterate fast enough with our distance. Bruh. What do you mean? Like, I would send if I send you something and you say no, change this little thing, and then I have to record it again, and I send it back, and you know, no, twelve hours no, go by, and no, I just I just need to know how to access. There's a there's there's a whole set of opportunities out there where you get lyrics for all your tunes. Well, there's also a set of opportunities where you get and and I have a characterization. It's a characterization. A set of opportunities. There's also a set of opportunities where you don't get the lyrics, you just get the music. And that allows you to practice karaoke as, as, as one way to describe it. I, mm -hmm. I'm sure that, that, that you understand what that means. If you, really, if you really think about it a little while, I know it's a lot for you. So music without lyrics that you can sing over. Did yeah. I get it? You don't know about this? I'm, I, I'm not surprised, nor am I shocked that I'm wrong. You're sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> you might be surprised, but you're not shocked. Well, that's 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 what we'll put on your tombstone. Surprised, but died, not shocked. <laughs> no, no. When he died, he was surprised, but he was not shocked. Period. Well, the unless, 
unless I die from this from this apparatus, we're gonna hook into our chairs. In that case. Oh, well. I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I've got to have a third party. i got to have a third party engage in this because you, you'd have mine fucking sky high and yours would be like a little fucking massage. I know you got a dark heart. You're, you're fucking sexually depraved. You, you, you're fucking pileated. <laughs> From you my bill to my nape. Mask on. <laughs> that's right. From your bill to your nape. You're a fucking pervert. That's a good, that's a good expression. You know, Donald Trump is, is dumb from his bill to his nape. He's pileated. He's pileated. He's peppered. He's a pileated pillar. Fucking... <laughs> Motherfucker. I'm just so fucking tired of watching him say it. And you know what? Hey, go ahead and link to this, okay? Donald Trump's 2020 burned, scorched earth political strategy, where he is going for Burisma. And all of the crazy overseas shit, the fucking impeachment, the Mueller, Obama, 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 Hillary, 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 scorched earth policy. Mm -hmm. How far away? How many months? Until? The election. We have to endure it. Hey, less than six, man. Why did you leave me here all alone? I searched the world over, and I thought I'd find true love. You made another and Good run. You was gone. Nice. I'm out, bro. I will see you next week, I hope. That's it for episode number 60. You can find the show notes at happyhour.fm slash 060 to find all the links to the stuff that we talked about. And you can help make help us make this podcast by going to patreon.com slash happyhour and just give a little bit of money. It would really mean the world to us. Or tell a friend. And by all means... Stay safe out there. See you next week.